today with the Professor Emeritus of Behavioral Ecology in the Department of Wildland Resources at Utah State University, and also the writer of Nourishment, What Animals Can Teach Us About Rediscovering Our Nutritional Wisdom. Welcome, Fred, to the show. And over the next three winters with different groups of goats, um, 18 different groups of goats in total, that group was the only group that ever ended up eating wood rat houses. And so <clears throat> one might think, you know, well, how does innovation start, occur, and begin in animal populations? That got me very much thinking about innovation, how innovation occurs, and then how those innovations are transferred from generation to generation. You know, we often think about genetics. What are the genetics of this or that or the other breed of animal? we seldom stop to think about the role of culture and how very important culture and extended families are in terms of, of knowledge and transfer of knowledge from generation to generation. And we did many, many studies over the years to show that animals have the ability to self-select for energy, for protein, for minerals, uh, even for vitamins. When they're lacking those and they, they have the opportunity uh, they'll select the, the nutrients they need. So that, that led to this whole exploration of nutritional wisdom in, in domestic animals and is showing that animals didn't, in fact, lose the ability to select nutritious diets. If mother eats something, the likelihood of her offspring eating it goes up compared to if mother's avoiding it. And if the young animal samples, which they often will, something that mother's avoiding, and they get sick a little bit, they strongly avoid it in the future. So mother becomes very important in terms of food selection. Beyond that, she becomes very important in terms of habitat selection. Uh, mother also becomes very important in terms of knowing what's a predator and what's not a predator. Domestic and wild animals both, when they're taken from familiar environments and placed in environments where they have no experience whatsoever, they suffer much more from malnutrition, from predation, from overingestion of toxic plants. Well, it's the availability of alternatives that's really the issue here. And our food preferences have been hijacked in two ways. One is that the, uh, the nutritional quality and flavor, which is intimately linked, as I'm trying to say, the, the flavor of foods is intimately linked with their nutritional quality. That has declined during the last 50 to 70 years in meat, in fruits, in, in vegetables. Um, the desirability of so-called junk food or, or whatever, ultra-processed foods has, has increased markedly. So <clears throat> Over the last 50 to 70 years, we've disincentivized real foods because they don't taste good because they're lacking uh, nutritional quality. Uh, at the same time, that junk food has become all the more all the more desirable, and so there's no way for nutritional wisdom to to be manifest in in human beings. <clears throat> 